So it's been a while since I've done a video with a head cam, so I thought I'd do another one. In this one I'm going to show you how to fix your 760 Pump Master for free. Now mine's 18 years old, it was purchased in 1993, September approximately, and the seals have gone on it because the rubber seals just, they don't, just can't last 18 years. But the rest of the gun is perfect, it's bolt and spring, everything's fine. Also, if you pump quickly, the chamber holds air and it still shoots, so you know it's just the uh, rubber seal here that's gone. And it just leaks while you're pushing it in like this. So if that's your case, if you can pump it quickly and still shoot, then you just need to replace those two rubber rings. So I'm going to show you how to disassemble it, fix it, and then put it back together. It's pretty easy to fix. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people have a 760 pump master that's old and broken and has broken rubber seals. Don't throw it away, take it apart, it takes almost 30 seconds to disassemble and about another minute to put it back together. So I'll show you how to do that. Take out the safety and you're going to want to place the parts onto the dish so that the parts that come out first go on top. But I'll show you how to take it apart and put it back together. Take off this piece, the BB holder. This springs the first thing that comes out, well after the safety. Let's put that at the top and this pin comes out on the right side. And after the pin, the hammer holder comes out, trigger, another pin, and then this spring and trigger bracket pusher kind of thing. So that's it, just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine parts. So now you've got it apart, you have to unscrew the uh, screw on the back, and screw the screw on the back and then the thing will come right off. It'll come right out from this plastic thing. Next you'll want to remove the hammer spring. Just put those aside and then the hammer will slide right out. And be careful, the hammer has this little pin. If you lose that It'll be kind of hard to find or replace. Alright, so I've hammered the pin in a little bit and I've filed the end of a V2 feathering shaft down a little bit and that fits right in there. And then you can punch that straight out. So after some hammering it's pushed out the pin. As you can see here, the pin fits perfectly into the V2 feathering shaft's end and then the flat spot hammers it straight out. And it's just slightly smaller than the hole diameter, so it works pretty well. So once you have that pin out, you can slide this thing out. As you can see here, this is a rifled barrel. You can see the riflings there. So it makes it a pretty accurate pellet gun. And this is the part that's failing. Now I'm just going to push the pump assembly out. Now here is the chamber and it holds air quite well. 
it's not leaking at all. So all you've got to do is replace this o-ring and then it should be able to pump it back up again. So it's this o-ring that's broken so I'm going to take it off with this plastic tool. It's an iPhone case, Assem just assembly tool but it'll work for this. You don't want to damage the metal. Alright, so instead of buying a new o-ring to fix it, this o-ring obviously is too small so all you've got to do is wrap thread around the center of this gap here and once you wrap enough thread around it, it's going to push this o-ring outwards and the o-ring was in like this I'm going to put the o-ring in backwards because I want the sharp edge to be against the pressure so I'm going to use grease, put the grease in there then I'm going to wrap the thread until it's really thick and then tie it off. Make sure the thread doesn't stick out. And then I'm going to put the o-ring on there. The grease is going to help fill in the gaps between the thread and itself. Alright. So that's tied off. Just cut it. Alright, so after we've got that pressurization cylinder taken care of, it's nice and tight. It won't even slide anymore, barely. That'll seal very well. Now we got to go ahead and expand this somehow. I'm going to get a ball or something. I'm going to jam it in there, ball bearing, then I'm going to clamp it. By clamping it, you're going to push this out. Alright, so I've got here a hex screwdriver, and the end of it's pretty hard plastic and it's just round enough. So when you take this and push it onto it, watch carefully. It'll spread. See that? So what I'm going to do is clamp it. Alright, so now it's being held against the cylinder, it'll open up, and if we heat this up with a hair dryer, it probably will help it hold. So let's heat it up and then see if it holds its position. Alright, so that's probably good. We've got it to about peak reading of 112 degrees Celsius so that should be more than plenty to keep it to do something to the rubber and hopefully this will cause it to keep the shape somewhat and that will allow it to push against the rod or push it against the cylinder alright so now I've let it cool it's about 29 degrees I can take it apart. And as you can see, it's stuck outwards instead of straight like it was before. So let's push that thing back in. And now, when it goes into this barrel, well, it barely even fits anymore. It's nice and tight. Look at that. Oh yeah. So I'm going to grease this up and then reassemble everything. So I'll go through the reassembly. First, you want to stick this thing back onto here. Take this pin, and I suggest putting a little grease on there. That'll help hold it in as well. Slide it in, and make sure you don't let it fall out the other side. I'll grease this thing up. Oh, actually, we gotta get this back in, so I'll grease this up a little bit. Slide that in. Make sure that when you slide this in, this is facing up, so it lines up with this hole here. So just slide that in. 
be tight fit now. Next you'll slide this in. I want to grease this up plenty. Make sure you use synthetic grease, otherwise it'll deteriorate the plastic or rubber. There we go. So that should put plenty of grease inside the shaft. You can see the, uh, the top of it right there. So now that it's lined up like that, you can place this on top. Once this one's in, and it's centered, make sure this one fits right on top of it. And I've creased it up a little bit. And then this piece over here, I've loosened it, slide that in, straight it out, and tighten this screw. Actually, you might want to get the pin in first. Now you'll want to hammer the pin in. Alright, so it's about equal on both sides. And now, don't make sure you don't pump it or put any pressure on it or else it'll move this piece. So now you could probably screw this in tight. Well, push the plastic forward and then screw it in tight. Don't over tighten it because it's just in the plastic on the other side. After you've got that together you can leave this thing open. It's got a lot of pressure building up now. See that? It pushes back. That means it's got a good enough seal. So let's start assembling everything. First thing you want to do is put your hammer back in. So now I'm going to put the hammer back in and I'm going to oil it a little bit with some high speed bearing lube. And then I'm going to take the spring and you want to take your plug and put that in. But now we're going to put it back together and grease everything up. So the bolt here needs grease, uh, and this is synthetic grease, so it's not going to deteriorate the plastic or anything. Now hold this plunger in, pull out your pin, and then make sure it goes in without shooting off. Once you have that together, okay, so that's in. Once you have that together, take this screw and place it in the back, otherwise it'll all fall apart. This is the one screw that holds the back on and keeps the plunger from firing off. Don't over tighten it. And now you can start reassembling everything from bottom up. So first put this in, or no, is this one? And then this spring goes in, and this metal trigger pushing thing, and the trigger, and make sure you push this up so that it can push the trigger. So there we go. And after that, this one and the pin. So make sure you grease everything up that you want to. This I don't really care about. This one I need to grease up. So make sure you grease everything up. So, so make sure you grease everything up before you put it in. This pin goes in. If you grease this up, it'll allow the trigger to feel smooth. So that goes in, then this piece. This doesn't really need to be 
greased up. The shaft's already greased. And the trigger. After that triggers in, there's another pin here and this hammer stopper. You're going to want to grease this up because there's a lot, of, a lot of friction right here. Most of the action is based on this. So. Here's the spring for it. And then the last thing is the safety. And the spring creates a lot of friction right here. And along here for the plastic. So I'm going to grease that up. Pull the spring back and then drop in the safety. There you go. It's completely reassembled. Now all you gotta do is put the stock holder on, put the BB gate on, and then reassemble the case. And then just put all the screws in. Now just put the stock back on and you're ready to fire. There you go. So now that it's all back together, we can test it out. Just pull your bolt back, pump it once, and fire. So it's holding air. Let's fire it with a little more power. You shouldn't do this, but... For testing purposes, it's fine. Oh yeah, it sounds like it's back up to uh, its full power, so... I'm gonna test it by shooting that water bottle. I'm gonna pump it 10 times, give it a chance to cut through it. Alright, don't pump it any more than 10 times or else it'll blow a seal. Ready, aim, fire. That looks pretty good. Oh yeah, that went straight through it. Entry wound and exit wound right there. So there you go, that's how you fix the 760 Pump Master. This one was 18 years old. It was purchased in 1993, September or so. And it's pretty cool that you can just take it apart, fix it, and then put it back together. And it works. For an 18 year old gun, that's pretty good. But you can also replace those two rubber parts for about $6 if you go to www.crossman.com. So I suggest you order the new parts because it doesn't work exactly as new. It's a little loose, but it's not bad. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope you get your 760 Pump Master working as soon as you can.